Well, good day, all. I'm Rapstein, and here we are. And it is Tuesday, July 25th, 2023, your Spider ETF stock market video. It's earnings day, earnings all over the board. So we're seeing Snap, we're seeing Microsoft come out. Uh, I think it was Alphabet came out. Uh, we've got Meta coming out, that's yet to, to happen. Um, it's company after company. The big tech companies as a whole, are doing fine. Microsoft, I saw, was down four to five dollars early. It recovered most of that. As uh, I, I'm coming on camera, it's down about a dollar and a half. But it, it's the money they're spending in Microsoft. I'm only mentioning because we're going to start with their chart. And they're building all the AI centers that they have to. And there's a big capital outlay. But if you look at their business, the AI especially is growing. They haven't begun charging that $30 a month yet, but that's coming. That'll be another revenue source. It's interesting to see that there's really no growth going on in Windows at this point in time. So it's these new products, of course, that will be there. And you know, I heard somebody say something today and I agree with it. And I, I gotta say to you this, this is like the industrial revolution when it comes to artificial intelligence. You are right at the beginning of it. So if you think you've missed it, you haven't missed it. This is gonna go for a very long time. Uh, the companies are just ramping up spending as you see in Microsoft, investors don't like it, but you gotta build the centers in order to handle what you have to handle. It'll be more of NVIDIA and other things like that going on. Oil is still getting bids as you can see, sort of stumbling a little bit right now in Netflix. Again, it sounds as though the FTC wants to go after Amazon. Uh, it's always for a breakup. It's always they can't do this with another company, something like that. It'll, it'll be just like Microsoft taking, off that, uh, taking over the other company. That's how these things generally work. The autos were generally lower today, as you can see through here. And airlines were a little bit lower as well. Gold market was up on the day. So as we take a look at Microsoft, all right, the market's sort of here trading between a trading low here near the 330s, got up into the 370s on 365, backed off, and it's sort of caught in there without a real trend. Uh, the market's got the higher high, the lower and low pattern, not doing a lot. As I see it, the battleground's going to be in the neighborhood of 342, if it can get back there. And as I said, it was about $5 lower. At when I, the earnings first came out, it recovered a bit. So if it's down in the day, it'll give you an idea of where I'd be looking for support. And on this run, I'd look for resistance if it gets up to 357 and no, you have worked off an overbought condition so the market's looking for its legs. What number would be a problem for the market? Well, should the market get under here, the 339.83, this last break low, that would be ugly because that would give you lower highs and a lower low under the 18 day average and open the door for the possibility of 328 given that the stock is not oversold. In Rivian, I'm watching this and when I see this type of pattern, often the market's saying to me, I'd like to get a little bit of a correction going. If you see this market starting to get through this uh, 2474 level, I'd get a bit nervous. That would tell me that maybe you wanna go back to the 18 day average to see what's gonna happen. When you had the bullish crossover, you did go up and make a new high and it's been in a consolidation phase. It is in an uptrend until that number is taken out. It is a buy until you get the red number under 79 on a close. And at that point, I won't want to be long at this point. In UGA, the gasoline fund, tomorrow we're going to get the EIA numbers. I want to see what they look like. But the one thing that's very evident is supply is falling away both in the US and the world on the amount of fuel that's out there. And that's important. It's an engineered shortage. It also works hand in hand with economies that aren't as weak as people thought. I was reading today an article that came out, uh, I think it was Bloomberg, uh, the global recession isn't materializing. Is this a turning point? That was, it was a title something in that area. I'm sure my words aren't exact, but that's the thinking that's going on. And we seem to be in this beautiful Goldilocks area. I I'm not denying it, by the way. I threw in the towel of saying that things were gonna get worse 
a month and a half, two months ago, as you know, I said that here. I said, no, the naysayers won the day. And I, I know I said it and I can prove it. And I it jumped off at the right time on the bears. And the reason is every break that happens, they bought and they were proven right over and over and over. And it's that simple. Uh, so until you have a reason to be bearish again, you don't want to be bearish because they won't just go away, those naysayers. You got to prove them wrong. Got to prove something. What's going to do that? I don't see it. Uh, we know inflation is sticky. We know the Fed's going to go up a quarter point tomorrow. My guess is that the Fed chair is going to do this. Hey, guys, we're going up a, a point. We, we felt the committees all thought we were pretty unanimous in our thinking. Yes, there's some people that are thinking we're getting close to whatever, but everybody agrees we'll be data dependent here. We did stand back and see it. We want to see more data. And here's what he's really saying. This is where he gets the free look right now. He gets two months before the next FOMC meeting after tomorrow. He's going to see two jobs reports. He's got CPI numbers he'll be able to absorb. They're going to know a lot more information. So he can't come out and say one and done. He's got to come out and say one. And if the data doesn't warrant it, it's another one. He's got to allude to something in that arena. That's what I think. On the financial services, still bullish as can be. Now you did see there was a takeover today. So we, we saw PacWest is going to be absorbed at this point in time. And there could be others. I mean, this makes sense. It's an all cash deal that's being done. I'm sorry, an all stock deal that's being done. Then they're gonna float some money, bring in another 400 million to shore up the, the companies. And they're gonna keep the name, from what I understand, uh, as it is. Interesting. Uh, XLI. Higher high, lower low, but embedded. What does it tell me? I know it sounds crazy, and it is crazy. Did you see the Richmond Fed numbers? They're all weak. Everything I look at in industry is weak, yet this market's got an embedded reading. It has stayed good. It has dropped a bit, but the drops in this market, if you've taken my course on embedded readings, until this number closes under 79, the pros are buying these and trying to pop higher. There's two numbers you look at. You look on the top at the Bollinger Band and a window envelope. So if you take my morning subscriber, if you ever taken a look at that, you can get free access to my morning paid subscriber for a two week period, both the ETFs and the futures in the free offers will show you at the end of this. Take advantage of it and you'll see how I use window envelopes with it. NVIDIA. I'm still bullish up another $10 on it. The weekly chart is what put me for my subscribers making that recommendation where I did in it. And uh, we've taken off a lot of the trade and now we're sitting here. Do I think this is a long-term stock that's gonna keep going? I do, but like anything else, a trade. We're not investors if you're watching this, you're traders. And I can trade off and make recommendations to trade off of daily charts and or weekly charts. It happens to be I do a lot of them on weekly and you end up in them longer. The, the recommendation, and that was June 24th, I think. Uh, that's all memory. Not bad, huh? And I'm not taking those pills that they say on TV. Higher lows, higher highs. Maybe we run up to the Bollinger Band again. Hard to tell. If you get underneath 508, I'd get real nervous in this market. It may have worn itself out. It is caught in a new set of bands that are going sideways. They had narrowed in, they pushed out a little bit, and they have just sort of been happy there. And when that happens, as long as you're staying over this last break low, I'm content that the market's going to try to work higher. Now, in the home builders, you know that they're coming in with good numbers as we see it. 7% mortgage. You know, people are comfortable with it. They're buying. That, that's all that you care about. Uh, keep your eye right through here. Now, what this market did, and we should point this out, is right here, you lost the embedded reading. The very next day, you did not gain it back. So even though you came up a bit today, this market has a better chance of getting down to the 18-day average than it does going for a new high to the upper Bollinger Band. Let's see how that works out. On the energy sector, we have higher lows, higher highs, and I'm just in the bull camp here. I, I made that statement to you. I mean, you're losing a million and a half barrels a day and world economies aren't falling off 
the table as many thought they would. Therefore, uh, here we are in the summer. What are you going to do is you use even more as you get into the fall. And the idea between OPEC and Russia is to squeeze you. That is the goal. They want to squeeze you. They want this to be $80 plus oil, and that's what they're working on. In the gold market, you are just correcting an overbought condition. Wouldn't surprise me if you hit the 18-day average, but you don't have to. When the market lost its embedded reading, I'll take you to this so you can see what I'm saying. Here you are, and the market loses the reading. It did it literally right on the objective, the 100-day average, and played there. I'm not convinced it has to go any lower. The market's got its closest objective. We'll see what the heck it does from here. Uh, a move back over, 182.54, gets me looking at the market like this. Maybe that was the correction, but I don't know. I don't want to be bullish or bearish on that at this point. In the silver market, you lost the bullish embedded reading. Before you go back up here, I think you're going to come down to these numbers. In the copper market, why did copper explode today? Well, yesterday, the Politburo from China, 21 members from the Communist Party, came out and they did a lot of talking about fixing the property sector there. But they gave no specifics at all. I mean, none. And I have scoured everything. Goldman takes that, and Goldman Sachs takes that to be very bullish, and they immediately up the price they think copper is going. I'm not in that camp yet. Saying you want to fix things and fixing them isn't doing it. But the market did make the jump. Goldman's got a big name in commodities, and away it went, but now it's at a brick wall. Why? Because you're at the upper Bollinger Band. What can make you run from there? The facts. What is China going to do? You need to get the facts. In BND, be careful in this and TLT. Why go into whatever the Fed's going to say, not say, say it right, say it wrong? I want no part of that. I learned so many years ago that you step off the rail track as a bullet train is coming at you, and you'll say, oh, I could have jumped easily and I would have made this. I'm going to tell you, there's a time, and I've been there, I'm like Swiss cheese. Everything bad that can happen to a trader's probably happened to me in my lifetime. You can't jump that way. There's an event that happens, and it just happens, and the panic happens. And you don't want to be there. Why be on that day where it can happen? Nobody can change what happens overnight out of no nowhere. But knowing you got a major event, in fact, you got a bunch of them this week. You've got the Fed, you got the European Central Bank, and you got the Bank of Japan. So you got to be careful if you're in FX or anything that could be affected directly by that. Not every market is. Here you've rallied into the resistance in the dollar. That's where I think the pros got out. If they were playing for a corrective bounce when you lost the bearish embedded reading, they hit it. I think they're sidelined. Same thing now on FX. Down to the number. This is where you should be, should be covering and walking away. But I don't want you to walk away from all the different things that we offer you. There's a slew of them, and you can choose as many as you want. On our website under free offers, or you can move your cursor up to the top and just click. It'll take you right to that area. This is what they all look like. Everything's explained. You click on the blue. It'll put it into a folder for you. When you're finished, a form will appear. We need your name. We need, obviously, your email address. Tomorrow, we'll get it out to you. Is it simple enough? It's like that. And I think you'll see things here you don't see anywhere else. Don't search all over the internet. We've put it together in a better way than you're gonna put it together. Uh, by the way, if you get my, if you choose to get free access to my newsletter and my videos for a bit, I write on the Dow theory tonight and I remind people what it is, what it's meant to do and what happens because the Dow theory has thrown out buy signals. We'll see if it works or not. On my rap scene, remember to click up here. Give me the thumbs up if you like this, and I'll see you all tomorrow.